Welcome back, everyone, to the Cancel for Maintenance podcast. If this is your first time joining us, we are a show that takes a behind-the-scenes look into the gritty, non-glamorous life of aviation maintenance. We share some laughs, impart some wisdom, all in hopes of giving you that split seconds relief in your day that can hopefully prevent a mishap. I am your co-host, Six. I am MBP. And our third host, Shoreline, is here again in the back, silently monitoring our audio, making sure our faces stay fit for radio. So we're going about a week to two weeks into the new year. And I'll say it's been pretty rough shaking off that holiday rust, so to speak. Yeah. Well, first off, happy, happy new year, everybody. Yeah. Happy <laughs> new year. To 2024. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's the party favor noise? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, shoreline, throw in some of those uh, whistles and pops and whiz sounds in there. <laughs> like a kazoo sound you know what i'm talking about yeah 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 <laughs> like the like noisemakers yeah <laughs> and it's uh, um it's been pretty rough shaking off that rust and for some of us who had some much needed time off it's a lot harder while others who have had to grind it out throughout the holidays i mean bless all your hearts man like i we've been there and it sucks and i would say though like the holiday season has its own weird schedule. Like there's a rush of stuff. And then there's like this period of just dead silence. And then it's back on again. I'm like, like it's almost like a whiplash effect, you know? Yeah, then- exactly. Well, it's like, uh, you know, uh, there's a rush, rush, rush leading up to Thanksgiving. But then that week of Thanksgiving, it's the ghost town at work because all your, uh, executives and all that taking time off the uh, leads are taking time off other people taking time off and then you come back from that and it's like it's like hit the ground running from right after thanksgiving until the week before you know christmas happens and it's just but then you hit that it's like we have to get everything done that we've been putting off for the last 11 months we have to get done in these three weeks before yes. christmas and you're like well what wait a minute, I, I can't get it all done in this time frame, you know? And then, and like, yeah, you have to do it now. And then you get to that week before Christmas, and they're like, but it could always wait till the, after the first of the year. Or you get to, oh, that's an after the first of the year problem. And you're like, well, geez, just, just last week you were screaming that it had to get done. And this week, and it's like, oh, they, it's because they got vacation time coming up. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then coming back, at least for the uh, the side of the industry that, six and I work on, um, you know, we, we typically are shut down for that, uh, week of Christmas. So, you know, we mm-hmm. have, you know, 10, 10 days counting weekends or something like that off. And, uh, mm-hmm. and we come back uh, January 2nd, which is an awesome downtime, but my God, it just seems to go faster and faster. Oh yeah. And, uh, and then that first week back is only a three day work week. So, a lot of people still haven't come back yet. So, so what do you do during those three days? Cause it's still relatively quiet. Um, you know, you, you get your end of month, end of year reports done. Yep. And then, and then, you know, we're on a Sunday right now. So tomorrow is when everybody's going to be back. So this coming week should be, uh, just horrible. <laughs> oh, mo- most horrible, <laughs> most horrible. Wait, have you ever noticed though? Like, uh, how everything just seems more less after a holiday. And, and I mean, like, besides, like, holiday lights and the cheery music everywhere, everything just, it just feels more bleak. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you've been let down. Like, someone just kind of kicked your spirits in the gut. Uh, it's almost like a hangover, like a holiday hangover. And yeah, I, I, well, you know, all the all the anticipation, the looking forward to that time off, the spending time with friends and family, the the lights, you know, the the uh oh, what gifts am I going to get or, you know, getting excited for your kids and the stuff that you got them, you know, yep. um uh all that uh glimmers and 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 shines and sparkles. And then once the holidays are over, uh it's kind of like it just the gray winter months until I don't know when's the next holiday. Uh, and I say holiday, meaning the next time we get a day off, I think it's May. Yeah. Uh, Is it well, Labor yeah. Day? I want to, yeah, I want to say it's Labor Day. 
well, like a confirmed holiday, right? Because yeah, yeah, you know, like certain places they have X my X holidays in between, but it's not granted to everybody, right? Yeah. Well, and and so then you say, well, okay, Christmas came and went, sure, but then you have New Year's. Well, if you're uh, if you're an old dad like myself, uh, you're doing everything you can to stay up till midnight on uh, New Year's Eve. And what kept me up this year was uh, Disney movies with my kids. Uh, they were like, come on, let's stay up to midnight. And I'm like, head bob. And I'm like, yeah, all right, let's do it, you know? Yep. So get some caffeine in you and, and, and power through. But um, I think after I think after you have kids, um, and not, maybe not just one kid, or but I think once you hit a certain age, and, and, you know, New Year's uh, Eve isn't a party anymore. It's just... It's just a day. Yeah. At least that's how I view it. And that's a negative view on it, you know, but, but, uh, so maybe, maybe to, to, we're talking about, you know, overcoming those holiday blues and that's all right, let's plan a party. Let's do something. But I got to tell you, just sitting at home watching movies with the kids, that was a good time for me. It was for me too. I, I freaking had a blast. And, and I think the fact that, you know, like we had time to just really soak up some of the stuff we've missed. Right, that's been a big, uh, bright moment, and then you, and then you, and then it hits you when you stroll into work. Like, well, fun time's over, you know. Like, yeah, it's almost like you have to pull the wool back over your eyes, right, <laughs> or put the horse yeah. blinders back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The 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 reality sets back in of all right, getting spooled back up for the daily, weekly grind and everything else. Now, what again? What did help is only having a three day work week, and it was still relatively quiet, so you could just sit down. And I think for me, getting back in the swing of things was just sitting down. There wasn't a whole lot of email traffic, but I was doing end of month, end of year reports. So while those are monotonous and and uh, tedious at times, they're not overwhelming. So it's just like a it was a gradual way to like get back into the to the swing of things. Get get you know remember what uh, things had happened and projects you were doing right before uh, the break happened. Yes. Um, and- now, one thing that also, you know, helps you look for is trying to break it up like, okay, the holiday breaks over, but I only got a three day work week. And then, you know, for our Hispanic uh, listeners out there who celebrate Dia de los Reyes, the King's Day, essentially oh. when the when the three kings finally made it to Jesus. Yes. The day they showed up. So, uh and there's Rosca, which is a bread, and I know I, I butchered the name. It's like Rosca Dia de los Reyes or Reyes Roscas or something like that. Anyways, it's like this circle uh, pan dulce or sweet bread, and it's got sugar on top and these green and red uh, like jelly type uh, yeah, strips on it. And uh, so in the Hispanic culture, they celebrate that day, and you cut out a piece of the bread and then within it are hidden like uh, plastic baby Jesus is. And so at least in, in, you know, our family, it's uh, whoever finds the baby Jesus, that family, you know, or that person has to contribute to buying carne asada for Easter. Ah. So it's kind of one of those things you're like, Oh, I cut the bread and you're like pulling it apart and like, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, yeah. I didn't <laughs> get the baby Jesus, you know, like, so I don't have to pay. Right. But you, get, you know, so it's it's kind of fun, and that gives you something else to look forward to. Um, right. Is that uh, that day of the kings, right? And you know, I, I like that you mentioned like um, easing into it because I'll be honest for myself, like that first stroll into work, it, it's it's almost like I'm relearning my job, right? Because you've taken some time off, however long or short that might have been. But there are times where like you kind of forget your your motions, right? Like. What did I do to get to work? How did I turn my stuff on? What what do I need to check? Or what was my routine before going on this extended time off or whatever? And there are moments where like you just have like trouble focusing. And that might be a sign too that the holidays really got you good is because you you're you have some form of fatigue. Uh you have trouble sleeping because you're thinking about work, uh trouble focusing when you're actually at work. Uh, some increased irritability, or at least for me, my irritability is like up there post holiday because you're already having the grumbles because you're at work instead of just having a little bit more time to 
let the holiday kind of ebb its way out of your system. But that that's definitely one of those things. But I especially love what MVP was saying. And this is may def- will definitely help uh, help make work suck less, so to speak, is um, have something to look forward to, right? Like set a goal for something, however big or small it may be. Like uh, I want to get XYZ done by lunch. I want to get this done after work, you know, just set a, a near term goal that gives you something to look forward to as MVP was saying, build a routine more or less, right? Cause you've been kind of, I mean, I'm not sure how some people plan their holidays. I mean, I, I used to be real meticulous. At, this is how we squeeze in maximum stuff within this period of holiday time that we got. But for myself, for the most part, holiday or planning just kind of just went out the door. Like, I'm just going with the flow of things. I mean, besides like the mandatory uh, gift wrapping, presents, uh, movies, music, and so forth. It's just pretty much go- winging it for the most part, <laughs> right? But then, and then you come back to work and now like you have to kind of re-engage that part of your brain that you turned off for some time. So having yourself a routine, just any kind of routine to relearn your steps, so to say, and then ease yourself back into it like um could be something simple like uh planning a better time to sleep right or meal prepping or uh again like having something to do outside of work or even at work whatever the case yeah i want to tie in with the with the at work thing real quick so if it's possible i don't know every job and positions um a little bit different but You know, if you can, if you can maybe kind of set yourself up before you go out on the holiday break, it's all right. When I come back, I've got this project 75% done. So when I come back, I just need to, you know, essentially tie the bow on it and sign my name. Um, Try to set yourself up for that. So you're not coming in and saying, and they're going, Hey, you need to build this entire uh, fabricate this uh, structural panel from this piece of uh, flat flat sheet uh aluminum like oh my god <laughs> yeah. like that's oh hold, i gotta remember what life is right now hold on my brain's not ready for the the high precision so if you can come back and then you know slowly get that you know take care of that one project and you come back and you, you finish that off and you're like wow i've already got something done this year and then you tackle the next one and eventually you go all right i'm ready for the sheet metal now but it's that it's kind of like a instead of waking up to an alarm clock uh, it's waking up on your own natural time, yes, so to speak. Uh, just yes. to put an analogy to it, but I think for me, right? So that's what those end of month, end of year reports are. It, it's um, it's kind of mind numbing, repetitive work, but I don't have to put a lot of brain power into it. It's just collecting metrics and data from these other sources and compiling it into one presentation that gets pushed up the chain. And, uh, and so for me, that was, uh, like, Oh, cool. I've got these end of month reports end of year reports done. Awesome. You know? And then, uh, by the end of that first week back, it was okay. Let me start into these <clears throat> projects. I had talked about at the end of 2023 that I want to begin and accomplish in 2024. And so one of those things, you know, one of the aspects of one of those projects that I get the whole project done, but I got, you know, a key element of it already accomplished, or at least a rough draft of it done. So even though it was only a three day work week, it was relatively productive. And and I think that's a good way to, to, to slow roll yourself back into that uh, rhythm. Yes. I mean, that's really good example, right? Um, Setting yourself up before a, a, a major break, really helps especially when you're coming back in you're not having to put out fires that you started (laughs) or you've neglected until that point Uh, another one to keep to try is just being mindful of the present right it kind of sucks having to tell yourself like all right holiday time is over vacation time is over it's time to get to work nobody likes to say that hell i don't even like to say it and i endure (laughs) we know it's coming but we, we 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 hate telling ourselves that so you just kind of have to understand that it, it's going to suck going back to work. But 
how you, like as MVP was saying, like if you set yourself up, it can make it <sighs> suck less, <laughs> right? And just being mindful and being present in the moment, like okay, like what happened in uh, a couple of days ago or last or this past year, it's over and done with. Let's let's start this off on the right foot and just slow roll, ease yourself it back into the mix and just be mindful of the present. And a good exa- a good way to assist in this as well is to kind of review what changes are relevant right Uh, because those three days that you've been or however many vacation time you've took there might have been some major changes that came about like uh, regulations got passed or uh, payroll it instituted a new element that you have to make relevant for this coming year or some uh, new company policy got changed when you were away, stuff like that. Just kind of like, that's another way to help re-engage yourself is to kind of see if there's been any relevant changes to you. So like, you're not just kind of, you're not getting the shotgun blast right off the bat from somebody because they assume that you knew it already, <laughs> you know? And um, uh, another one that we've actually been preaching for some time now, which is another thing we're going to be trying out for ourselves is uh, try something new. Or try a new approach to something. This can be a whole slew of anything. Like how you go about packing your toolbox. How you go setting your uh, your station, your workstation up. Or how you walk into work before you check your, your messages and stuff like that. Just try a new element and see how that works out. Because we've, we've learned our lesson, hopefully, from the past couple months, the past year. So... Try to set set yourself up for on the right foot and just experiment a little bit. You know, like um, don't just live in the monotonous because we complain about this all the time. So, like, try to introduce a new element into it or a new approach to it. So, it it hopefully like makes things easier, or at the very least, gives you something to look f- to be enthusiastic about trying. <laughs> if that makes any sort of sense. <laughs> Well, so to play on that a little bit, right, you had mentioned a little while ago about, uh, you know, uh, attempting something new o- over the break. Uh, I think one way to help you get back into the rhythm a little bit faster and combat, combat those uh, post-holiday blues is to not really fully shut down over yeah. your time off. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean like, no, still logging into your work, your, your laptop and checking work email over that time. No, but keep your brain engaged. Uh, have a project around your house you want to do or, you know, start reading a, a new book. Um, it, it, take a hike somewhere that you've kind of wanted to, but didn't really, you know, it's a little bit further away and you didn't really want to take PTO to go do that. Whatever. Uh, an example is for me. Uh, I'll use it. I've started getting into woodworking. And so over the break, uh, I, you know, I built a coffee bar for our dining room and, uh, because I didn't have, I wasn't time pressed, um, on a weekend schedule. Like I was this weekend with two other projects, you know, I had a few days where I could spread it out and I'd work on it a little bit here and there. And then I'd go off and do something else with the family or, 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 uh, I started playing the news. My, my one son got the new Spider-Man video game. So I started playing that. Which mm-hmm. is a, it's a lot of fun. The Spider-Man games are a, are a blast, mm-hmm. but um, but you know, then I go back out and work on it a little bit, and and it says my dad calls it, it's it's recreational work therapy. Mm-hmm. So you're you're working essentially, but it's not. It doesn't feel like work. It, it just keeps your mind engaged. Keep, gets you to look at something a little bit differently. You're trying to figure out the best way to put it together and custom make something or how do I take this and make it look better? Right. Oh, if I add some trim here, or, okay. What color of stain should I put on there? And that could affect how the outcome at the end too. And how do I want to apply it? And uh, you know, all those kind of things, but it keeps your mind uh, active. And again, you know, great to shut down or whatever else, but um, I think, but completely shutting down, you know, it's really hard to spool back up. Think about like a diesel engine. Uh, great when they're up and running, but man, cold, cold starts, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> and so oh. 
ask me how I know, and that's because I'm notorious for when there's downtime like that, I I will I will brain dump. Like I'll shut off to where I, I dump internal memory. Same now <laughs> that's fantastic because it's just like no stress, no nothing, no, you know, whatever. But it's great for that time. It's when you have to get back into the mix of things that it's really difficult. And so this year was one of the easiest years I had in getting back into work because I, I did a little bit of things here and there. You know, I was playing the game, building the woodworking stuff, uh, started reading uh, a new book. Um, so that kind of stuff, right? So, and then, and then those projects, right? You start them and I like the one I finished over the break, that coffee bar, but then I started two other um, woodwork pieces that uh, I'll finish throughout this coming week. So it's those little things that it, it makes me go, okay, I'm in the work, I got to do these things, but coming up this weekend, I am going to do this, this, and that. It, for me, it just makes, it, it's been super beneficial to um, combating those uh, post, post blues. And that's a very good example. Uh, likewise for myself, uh, I didn't do anything, any major projects that I've been doing the past tw- uh, year in 2023, which is like model painting or miniature model painting. But what I have been trying is, uh, actually MVP is, uh, is a testament to this, is I started storyboarding a lot of stuff. Like I, I've, um, how do you say, I've been talking to a lot of people who write a lot, right? Like not just uh, books, for fantasy stuff but people who journal a lot of stuff like and uh i've noticed like with the way they journal and the way they write their stories it makes seeing the outcome that much more clear so like uh being able to storyboard stuff like uh for example for our comics i'm able to like kind of see like a pattern of where we want to go and this will in in a in turn show up in our comics in the near future when we start doing more uh, lengthened stories so to say and that engaging that creativity part of your head it just like it lets you see things a little bit different it still gives you the logic of trying to problem solve stuff uh similar to what mvp was saying physically but um it uh it lets you start questioning of things that you normally don't right like uh why does this person do this why does this matter why is he com- he or she committed to doing that And you start and then we start rolling into the work week and you start seeing similar patterns in the way people do do things or how they expect things. Like what's this person expecting when they come in? What's this person uh, keep what's keeping this person going to do their job for the next however many hours, weeks or whatever. And you start understanding their motivations for things and how what peps them up, what keeps them going. And so that's been a very uh, motivational part of my end is just like. Uh, being more emotionally intelligent on those things. And um, I would say another part that's really been helpful and will help you uh, to help beat back the holiday blues is to uh, just go on, get some sunshine, <laughs> you know, breathe some fresh air, go, go touch grass, uh, <laughs> go on a walk, get moving, do something right. Like some kind of physical activity. And we've been saying this like for past episodes, but it really does make a difference when you go outside and feel fresh or breathe fresh air and touch grass. It, it, the, uh, I can't, I can't even put it into words. Like it's like you're, it's like you're meant to, to, to feel these things. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, we are as, as humans, we we're, we're meant to be in, in, we're meant to, to feel nature, right? We're, that's how we synergize with the, uh, electromagnetic fields and everything else i'm butchering it but of the earth you know and the mm-hmm. polarizations and stuff and, and we as humans are made to be a part of that and and so i'm glad you said that because one of the things this year is you know my uh wife and kids are always barefoot man like if they're not at school or whatever i mean they're running barefoot in and out of the house whatever and one one of the things i i am always in shoes or like flip flops, even in the house, I'm wearing flip flops around. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the things I kind of want to try this year is maybe not right now because it's cold, but <laughs> when it starts warming up, is is you know even being in just the backyard or whatever is just is just walking around bare bare feet. And, and 
you know, just to just to re realign myself a little bit, but also to just not have such I don't know, for lack of a better word, baby feet, you know, like <laughs> just to toughen myself up a little bit. Maybe maybe it helped me walk more naturally. Maybe that would alleviate some uh bodily stresses I undergo or ailments, right? Is is by walking barefoot you walk natural. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, stuff like that, you know. Right. And that kind of goes into what we we're saying about that new approach thing, right? Like you try something different, try something new. And uh along with like the getting moving part, that's another one of mine. It's like just getting more more mobile. Just go for a 30 minute walk or something like that, right? It's you it may sound like a shock, but we don't move around a whole lot. Even when we're on the flight line, there's not a whole lot of moving. Like you do bursts, you move from point A to point B for like five, 10 minutes. And then that's a rep. And then you're kind of just <laughs> sitting in the heat or in the funk of stuff until <laughs> you got to move again. <laughs> you know oh what my I mean? God. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm laughing because just a couple of hours ago, I was out on the garage and I was down on the floor on my side and I was with the Brad nailer and installing the trim on the bottom of this piece. And, uh, and my daughter came out to just see, cause I built, I'm building these things for her room. So she, you know, coming out to do the old quality inspection on them and see, uh, just how long dad's taken to build these things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I put in that piece of trim and she goes, wow, it's looking really nice. I said, yeah. And then I went to get up and it was a series of, <coughs> shit, <coughs> 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 ah, you know, getting up and she <laughs> got him. She goes, oh my God. <laughs> are, are you dying you know <laughs> and i was like no but i kind of feel like i am and right. i've said it for two years now that i and some people are going to laugh and chastise me but I, I i would like to try yoga um i would too i i, I miss lifting and all those kind of things and being strong but as i get older and i keep thinking back to one of the security guys i had when i was deployed years ago and he was a uh, he was a seal in his active duty life, but he said, "You look, you know, getting older." He goes, "I don't have to be as strong as an ox anymore. We have machines that can do all the heavy lifting." He goes, "But it gets harder and harder to get out of bed." And he goes, "And that that can't happen." So he was very big on stretching and yoga and everything else. Yeah, he lifted and stuff too, but he he didn't go heavy or anything. He would just do do stuff to maintain, but everything else was mobility exercises oh. and uh, and flexibility, and so that's something that I'd like to uh, focus on. Now I can tell you, uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm saying I want to do it. I don't know if I'll start it this month or in May, but I'd like to, you know. <laughs> same, same here, man. I, I, I can attest, man. Like uh, what your friend said, man. That is spot on because. I can t if if you guys don't believe me, man. Like stretching is a workout in of itself. Like, if if you're not, I remember I took this one yoga class for me. It was probably like twenty minutes, and I don't, I don't know if that's long enough to be considered a session. But in those twenty minutes, I was dying, like I was sweating. I was all I was all freaking having a hard time holding myself up and stuff. And like I never had such a workout just from stretching. How is this even a thing? And it could very well just be that I am just inflexible <laughs> but man i had such a hard time for just the 20 minute stretch session i was dying man like is there is there's like some magic trick what the heck's going on with this man like i've never felt so burned out just from a stretch and that could also be very well because you know uh right up until today's society like everything's all about moving heavy weights right picking them up and putting them back down and there's not a whole lot of emphasis on the air quote stretch it's just kind of like something that you're just supposed to know, but no one ever really does. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like it's kind of like cardio. Like no one likes cardio. They just get on the treadmill and just sweat it out for twenty minutes or whatever. But that's it. But like no one actually teaches you how to cardio the right way. And yeah, I'm, I I can honestly get a cardio just from doing a stretch. For real, man, I was dying. <laughs> I get cardio just from bending over trying to tie my shoes. Same, same. I, can, I have to do. I have to do the big inhale. And then bend over, tie my shoes while I'm holding my breath, and then exhale on the way back up. Sometimes <laughs> I don't get to hold it long enough to finish tying both shoes, as sad as that is to admit, but it's true. Same here, man. Uh, uh, so, 
um, meant to tie that in with your work, you know, being mobile, man, on your break, go take a lap around the parking lot or, or something, you know, something, I don't know. Something, but, man. But I think you're going to find that how being so much more flexible will and benefit you in your job. Same. Um, just these tasks that you do all the time won't be as difficult. Oh, very, you know? very much so. And you won't dread putting on your Tyvek suit to climb <laughs> on top of the aircraft to, I don't know, you know, yep. do, I, do anything. Um, because you won't be out of breath just putting on the Tyvek suit. Yep. I agree. I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, I would say also to, uh, help uh, break the holiday blues and and also to just help make work in general suck a lot less is uh gamify your stuff right like set up set up like some type some type of game challenge for yourself right like i'm gonna do xyz by this point or or i'm gonna have to do this right kind of like those i dare use or whatever but kind of make it fun and achievable for yourself right um uh, myself for instance right i'm we we did a run challenge with women rock wings the past couple months and that was pretty fun, like having to walk around and do photo challenges and stuff. And so as far as myself goes, um, start, I want to do another some type of run challenge where it kind of gamifies having to go outside. Because, <laughs> I mean, running in general, just I'm, I'm not one of those who like running. I just, I just don't. <laughs> For those that do, by all means, kudos to you, man, because I, I don't find it fun to be out of breath <laughs> you know yeah i'm jealous of people who who can just run three miles and it doesn't even phase them yeah right like and even in my best of shape three miles was rough yeah i mean i'll bike for three miles like i'll constantly pedal for three miles but i think a lot i think a lot of that has to do that i'm still moving even though what i'm not pedaling but even even so man like for those who can do those long distance run like kudos to you all the props because I have none of that. <laughs> so uh, one way to beat myself out of that mindset is to kind of make it fun, make some kind of a challenge or something that you find fun and incorporate that into it. Not just for running in general, but for stuff around work, like make, give, give yourself some points or something like that. Like, like uh, if I do X, Y, Z fast enough, I get Snickers bars or something like that. Right. And then maybe have a couple of friends who are in on it. Right. So they kind of inject some fun into it you know <laughs> well actually you know that's funny you say it, it brings some friends into it. i was just uh listening to two bears one cave yep which is uh tom segura burt kreischer the comedians their uh their podcast and in, in the one episode they were legit calling all of their friends saying hey we're gonna do a 5k 5k by may so mm -hmm. They're all going to get on board and then they're all going to show up to this. I think it's in New York City, but they're going to do a 5K in New York City together. But they all have to train for it starting now. And so the episode was them calling their friends and, you know, being comedians, right? Talking shit or whatever else and saying, who else should do it? And they're like, oh, call so-and-so. Get their, <laughs> get their fat asses to do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was kind of it was kind of fun. But, I mean, to, but it's easier with friends. Yes. For sure. You don't feel... Uh, not all of us are Goggins, uh, David Goggins. I'm definitely not. Oh, same here. Uh, uh, if I get in my own head out there, and some days I can, like, stop being a little baby. Get out there and run. Mm -hmm. Don't be a wimp. But then uh, 10 minutes later, I'm like, you know what? You can stop. What, what are you <laughs> running for anyways? Yeah. You know, a nuclear blast is going to come take you out. You can't outrun that, the shockwave. So what are you <laughs> running for? And it's like. It's just, you know, that's, that's an extreme example, but like, yeah, I, but I mean, like your mind goes, but there, how right? easy it is to talk yourself out of it is I guess is what I'm getting at. Right. And, and that's what I mean by like, when it go like try to gamify for it. Right. And especially have like some friends who are motivated enough to, or who would give you inspiration to keep going. Even if it's just for like five, 10 extra steps, it's like, Hey man, five extra steps, you get a Snickers bar or five extra steps. You get to have that one thing in your salad or some shit, you know, like, um, Something that's that, that's that's of value to you and it's motivational to you, right? Not just friends who just talk shit because eventually uh, if you talk shit to me enough, I'm just like, you know what? Whatever's dude, I'm cool with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You start you start like just uh, agreeing with it, right? You Like you call a dude a dog long enough, he'll start barking like one. So like, whatever's man. Uh, it, yeah, with that Eminem song, I, I am whatever you say I am. Yeah, exactly. And then it just, 
like, you get enough of that at work. And so when, when your boss tells you you're trash, I'm like, whatever, man, like here's your trash work. <laughs> right. So you already expect little of me. So why, why should I go above and beyond? Right. Uh, that kind of plays into that mindset as well. So having uh, friends, that's very interesting. I never really thought about that, but that's kind of true. Not to side, side rail the conversation here, but it's kind of true where it's one of those where it's like, okay, well, you were doing something at work and then, nah, that wasn't good enough. Do it again. And then you come back and then, nah, do it again. Do it again. And after so long, and each time you know you're improving it subtly, but you're just not getting that feedback, eventually you just go, oh, fuck it then. If, not, if, if, if it's never going to be good enough, then I'll just do it the way I originally did and at least I'll be done with it. Right. You know? Uh, so then you stop, then you stop striving. So, so that criticism, I think does, uh, self-criticism and external criticism does have a, have a limit to it. Um, you know, they call it, what was it, uh, like, you know, that positive reinforcement, I think, you know, air quotes on the positive ha- does have a limit because, after a while, if it's just the same, you know, if you're starting to run the 5k, right, you're starting to run three miles and, um, and now you've gotten yourself to the point where you're able to run two miles without stopping on your way to the three mile mark, but you're being berated as if you couldn't run 10 feet still, then I think you just give up. You're like, all right, what, what, what am I doing here? What, what's, yeah. what's the, what's, what am I really doing here? Yeah, exactly. And, and so that, that's, that, that kind of goes into what we were saying about the new approach thing, but and then, but also just having like that that base or that that um uh, I I had it going and then I lost it, <laughs> but just like yeah. having having like the friend base and the people who who know what motivates you, and including yourself, like what motivates you to do things, right? Like, do you sometimes like to be have shit talk to you, or do you like having shit talk to you with a and with a light at the end of the tunnel? You know what I mean? And I think that goes especially with work too, right? Like you know, like stuff's going to blow, you know, stuff's going to suck. And, but if you already know these things are, are going to happen and, and you have like at least one partner who can help it suck that much less, it, it kind of, yeah, they're in the suck with you, right? Yeah. There's not somebody in their high, high ivory tower telling you, wow, that sure does look like it sucks as they go back and sit on their gold throne. Right. You know, um, they, if they're like, man, this sucks but they're, they're enduring the suck with you. It, it makes all the world a difference. And I'll, I'll use a, a phrase from back in my deploying days. I had one guy, you know, he, he's like, Oh my God, these days just don't end. And this is horrible. We have so much maintenance going on and all these flights and everything else. And it's hot as hell outside and blah, blah, blah. And I just, I don't know why I said it, but I just, without, without even thinking, I just went, it can only last 12 hours. What? I said, it can only last 12 hours. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, we're on 12 hour shifts here, right? The suck can only last 12 hours. And then it's somebody else's suck for the next 12 until we come back and pick it up where they left off. You know, and then, and then that was like a game changer. Mm -hmm. So after that point, every time it was a rough day, he would just pay like in passing. He was like, it can only last 12 hours, right? And bebop on his way to the next aircraft. Yep. So <laughs> I I liked how you and I we kind of jived on that on the same wavelength without even realizing it, right? Because I was literally about to say that. <laughs> I was about to say the exact same thing. I'm like, and uh being able to break it up into like at least more manageable bits, right? Like it can only last 12 hours, it can only last 10 more feet, it can only last whatever, right? It gives you a li- it gives you an end point to to look forward to versus just like, Oh, this is like 160 miles or this is going to be a three month long stint or whatever. Like, yeah, well man, take it 12 hours at a time. What what they going to do? It can only last 12 hours or it can only last until lunch or whatever. Right. (coughs) Right. And just at least being able, at least setting those smaller, more uh, manageable endpoints, right. It makes it that much easier to, to digest and let's say likewise with like running, for instance, right? Like you're not going to run a marathon right off the gate. It's just not going to happen. Like I think even the most naturally gifted person is going to have a hard time running 26 plus miles in one shot with zero prep. So likewise with us at work, like you're not going to expect to just survive for 
and just be a hundred percent all the time. Like you gotta like slowly break these up into something where it's easier for you to manage it and just kind of live it by the hour or by the task until it's finished and then move on to the next. Like I think yeah. that's a I think that's a big problem that we've all have, especially post holidays. We try to like stack everything on the plate and try to manage it all at one shot. <laughs> like it's just not not gonna work that way. You will burn yourself out before that before that uh that task list gets finished. Like right, and you can even break up work with work. Well, MVP, you crazy sob. <laughs> what do you mean with that? Well, all right. So look at it this way: we had our first week back. <clears throat> now this next week, my boss is going to be off site at training for work. Like he's going to be doing. I, I can't remember what the training is, but he's going to be off site taking this training that's going to benefit him in his position. Um, so even though he's not at work, he's still learning something that will benefit him next week, a year from now, two years from now, whatever. So, so you guys could do it that way too. Right. So, you know, I think that's something I'd like you guys to challenge yourselves on this year is take a training that you've kind of been interested in, whether that's welding, uh, soldering, uh, wiring, right. Crimping terminals and all that kind of stuff. Um, sheet metal, uh, yeah. composites, uh, engine gen fam school and airframe gen fam school, something, but then that'll also give you something to look forward to, but it's not completely shutting down either. So you're not at work dealing with the daily stresses of work. However, you're still learning something new in the process and hopefully getting paid at the same time. But that breaks up that monotony. Again, it gives you something to look forward to. Downtime, but not shutting off your mind downtime. You know, that's a very good point. And you're absolutely right. Like, uh, especially when it comes to something that's helping you progress. I mean, you're not doing 100% the daily grind you're used to. You're having some bit of an air quotes break because you're trying something completely different than what you're normally tasked to do but it's helping you engage your brain in different ways and i i, I absolutely like that and that's something that i'm gonna try to do my for myself uh this year like just to experiment with uh different aspects of the job right like uh, some of the things that are not as heavily focused or something that's like it's it's an opportunity that's there but not a whole lot of people see or take advantage of it so that's definitely something I want to try for myself. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is I'm going to be trying, but uh, I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> and that makes any yeah. sort of sense. Well, no, I, I get what you're saying because I've sort of done that. I started that, I'd say, since probably late summer of 2023. And I started developing, I started getting more involved in this one area of work that was otherwise untouched by the department. And then I brought one of my analysts in with me and we've kind of been, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry, everybody. Holy cow. Uh, it's all that sawdust. Um, and we've started deep diving and getting involved in these areas and researching and reading. And I've started even developing paperwork that will go along with it. That'll help us down the road as we expand into this realm and, and, it's not like I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to learn stuff to prove to my superiors that I know what I'm talking about. They don't know either. So I'm doing this for the everybody. And so because that's happening, this could is going to expand the departmental capabilities, your capabilities. And when you grow, when it, it does it finally expand, you're going to be at the forefront of that. And they're going to go, hey, you did all the legwork. Take it over and set it up how you want it to run. And that might create growth opportunities for you. But like Six said, find that, uh, try to find that one area that's not being addressed really and, and take off and run with it. And maybe that's your, uh, battery shop. You know, you have a back room where people take batteries and they put them on a, uh, on a deep cycle or whatever else. But other than that, it's kind of left neglected and unattended and there's no real process and procedures, just grandfathered knowledge and OJT that teaches people how to do it. We'll mm -hmm. set that whole thing up, create, um, Create Excel spreadsheets that, you know, auto auto uh, formulate the time and, and does a countdown for all the serial numbers of batteries you have and 
when they're coming due and these kind of things and really make it something. Yeah. And that's a very good point. Right. So all, all in all, right. Uh, we know shaking off the holiday rust, it sucks. It, it's cause like you, you're in this motion where you disconnect, you disassociate, you brain dump, you info dump. It's great. And it's a time off and time well needed time well deserved. It, but re-engaging that side of your brain to get back into the mix, become productive again. It sucks. It's like grinding gears on a, on a stick shift. It's going to happen, but it, it sucks uh, for the first couple of moments. Or like as MVP said with the cold start diesel engine. It's going to suck for like that first couple of minutes until everything warms back up again. So to help make it suck uh, or help that cold start be a lot easier... Uh, build a routine, try something different. Uh, just be mindful that it's going to suck for that first couple bits until everything warms back up again. And then just set your set some goals, set something to look forward to, uh, something small but manageable, uh, or it's only uh, gamify it if you have to, right? Have some friends who are in on it, gamify some stuff. And try something new, who knows, right? Um there's other stuff you can possibly do too, like uh, journaling stuff. Maybe seek some professional help. Uh, professional help doesn't necessarily have to be someone you go to when something's wrong. It could just literally be like that that professional pep talk that you just need. It, it sounds weird. Trust me, it does. But just having someone professionally third party, like just uh, reaffirm your thought process, it's life changing sometimes, right? Especially sure. when... I'm batting a thousand. How do I can? How do I keep batting a thousand before the before the rug proverbial rug gets yanked out from under me? Right. You know. Yeah, and uh, we've actually had some who, and this is not like some epiphany thing that I've just known all my life. Like, uh, we actually had a, a therapist uh, from Coral who actually told us that like therapy doesn't have to be just when something's wrong. It can be to reaffirm what's what you're already doing right. Like, I'm batting five hundred. Is that good? Like, phew, that's freaking amazing. How about you try bat 525 for a good measure? See if you can get there, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a terrible example, but you know, like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be when there's a fire. It can also be there as a preventative to make sure that said fires don't happen, right? And um, yep. Um, and, and I mean, we're in a new year, man. So uh, we're hoping to not repeat the same mistakes. And hopefully not make new worse ones. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh it's it just re- just realize it's gonna suck and uh it's really up to your it's it's limited by your creativity of how much you're gonna help make it suck less. <laughs> um any anything else about anything, Mr. MVP? Welcome back to work. Happy New Year. And we're here to help you get through the suck if and when you need us. Absolutely. And where we say this all the time, but we're, we're here to help in any way, shape, or form. Like, uh, give us some feedback. Tell us what you guys think. Like, what's some ways that uh, you guys do to shake off the holiday rust? Has there been some things that you've tried that, you, that really worked for you and no one's ever tried it yet? Let us know. Or if you need to talk to us for some other reason, or you need to just kind of like uh, bat things around before you actually hit the execute button, we're there too, right? You can reach us in our social medias. You can reach us by our email, our website. The absolute best way to get a hold of us and have conversations like this with us is through Discord via our Patreon. We have all sorts of uh, conversations like this. Like we learn a lot of stuff from our patrons too, like some stuff that we just never actually thought was a thing <laughs> until they started mentioning it to us. So the avenue is always there. It's always open. And please uh, share your feedback with us. Like what sort of things that uh, helped you or what sort of things that you feel we haven't touched yet that can, that can help people. <laughs> uh, we're coming into 2024. We are going to be doing some in-person stuff. And that's been a major goal of ours. And we're looking forward to doing it for the first time in February at, at an expo. So as we get closer to that date, we'll send out more information on that. So if you're in the area of this of these in-persons, please come see us. Please come meet with us. We'd love to have some conversations with you guys in person and actually meet all of you who listen to us. 
On that note, we thank you all again for listening, and we'll catch you all again on the next one. Have a good one, everybody. Bye, everyone. We would like to take this time to thank our patrons for supporting our show and allowing us to make episodes, maintain our gear, and create merch for all of our listeners. With special thanks to Erica Lamont, Chris Hawkins, Eric Shaw, Dan Schubert, Ryan Frushauer, Kyle Keir, Mike Sherwood, Caleb Stockhill, and Jennifer Brofer. Thank you all so much for your support and patronage. If you like our show, please support us on Patreon. You'll receive awesome perks like access to our private Discord, discounts and early access to our merch, first glimpse of our comics and other projects, and so much more. You can further support us and show off your prowess as an aircraft specialist by visiting our shop at cancelformaintenance.com. If you like classy or rugged watches, visit our affiliate Rockwell Time at rockwelltime.com. Use the code CX, the number 4MX, to save 10% off your total order. If you have suggestions for the show or you'd like to be a guest on the show, send us a line on our contact us section at cancelformaintenance.com and we'll do what we can to get both your ideas and yourself on the show. Please support us on social media like Facebook at Cancel for Maintenance, Instagram at C-A-N-X for Maintenance Podcast, or Twitter at C-X-M-X Podcast. Please check out our new comic series on the Tapas app. Like, share, subscribe, and comment on our comics. Let us know what you think. Thank you all so much for your support and listenership, and we will catch you all next time.